So clearly here, the only eigenvalue is lambda equals zero. Why? Because this is an upper triangular matrix and it has zeros on the diagonal. We also know that the dimension of the null space is given by the number of free variables that there are. And in this particular case, there is one free variable corresponds to the column that has the zero in it here. Because there's only one free variable, the dimension of the null space is one, which means you should only be able to find one linearly independent vector in that null space. That null space is entirely characterized by one vector. That means that there's only one linearly independent eigenvector for this matrix. And that means that if we try to find a matrix X that has linearly independent columns so that it has an inverse where the columns consist of the eigenvectors, we can't do that because there's only one linearly independent eigenvector. And that's the fundamental problem here. This, by the way, is known as a Jordan block. Details of that go a bit beyond this course. You may want to go and investigate what a Jordan uh, factorization is. Sometimes it's called the Jordan canonical form of a matrix. Go investigate. Why is diagonalization so important? Well, let's go back to our weather example. Okay, There we had that some transition matrix took the state at um, step at time k into a state vector at time k plus 1. If we look at xk plus 1, that's just p times xk. Or we can say p squared times xk minus 1, or p to the k. Hmm, I think that actually needs to be p to the k plus first power so there seems to be something wrong. I'm not going to keep correcting this, so keep in mind that that needs to be corrected. So p to the 30th power, for example, now what would that give us? That would give us the transition matrix that predicts the weather uh, one month from now from the weather today. That would be a matter of multiplying this matrix together p times, which obviously could be very expensive if p is an n by n matrix and n is large. If instead we diagonalize that matrix, then we recognize that P can be written as X times the diagonal matrix times X inverse. So if we then raise that to the kth power, then we can write that as 30 times just X lambda X inverse. We can then recognize that we can drop all the parentheses and insert new ones and each of these become an identity. And then we get that it's just x times lambda multiplied together 30 times, which is this x times lambda to the kth power. But if you take a diagonal matrix and raise it to the kth power, that's a matter of taking the diagonal elements and raising them to the kth power. And obviously that's a lot cheaper than multiplying the matrix P 30 times. So in summary, a is diagonalizable if and only if there is a matrix X and the diagonal matrix lambda such that X inverse AX equals lambda. And there's a couple of different useful ways in which one can write that. All of them, well, all of them given here except not. Let's see, there's, there's an X missing there. So let's keep that in mind, okay? I'm not going to keep correcting that. And then A can be diagonalized if and only if A has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, diagonalizing a matrix is another way of stating the algebraic eigenvalue problem. That's the important thing to take away from this unit.